So for me, it's not about going away to find a, a utopia. It's about creating it wherever you are. Mm. Mm. However you might see that. Because <laughs> mm. mm. everyone's different, aren't they? Mm. Mm. Yeah. yeah, it's almost like the, you know, the, 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 the utopia that arises from within. So when you... Um, well, well, one of the things I think we both notice is that there seems to be a, um, you know, kind of a widespread disconnect that people have uh, with themselves internally, with other people, and with everything around them, with this beautiful place and space and earth that we live on. It all seems to be quite disconnected, and so beginning to begin to actually cultivate some some caring about those things is very um, very kind of fundamental and I guess that's what we've started to do in our in our way is to genuinely care my name's Ollie uh, we're at 3 York Street and I'm here with my partner Vanessa yeah, it's so for York Street in Waltham, in Christchurch. Yeah. And we've lived here since the 6th of January 2000. And when we um, bought the place, when we shifted in, it was a, a lovely 1880s vintage uh, double brick cottage. Uh, so a place with a lot, of, a lot of history and a lot of character, which is what we liked. Mm. We generally don't like new stuff, we like old stuff. <laughs> and um, yeah, seated us just fine until the earthquakes arrived. <laughs> and then it was, um, yeah. It doesn't do so well brick, in an earthquake. Brick don't do very well at all. Yeah. yeah. So this is our state of the art uh, brick oven uh, with its new, beautiful new metal door yet to be tested. Um, and a nice little firebox in there we need to go and collect a few more pine cones but this is a nice um, a nice kind of bread baking oven yeah well good a good kind of general purpose oven again um, more bricks from the old house and um, actually took us longer to build this than it did to build that funny enough yeah eventually we just got like a huge piece of paper and wrote down Okay, so what are all the things that we could do? What, what are all the possibilities that we could do? And there are all these wonderful things that we could do around living here. We definitely wanted to live here. And that was, that was quite a turning point, wasn't it? Mm. Yeah. And, um, so we watched YouTube, got some inspiration on how to build. Yeah. We saw that teenagers were building tiny houses and thought, yeah. oh, we can do it, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> This is our hut. It's about 10 square metres, isn't it? Hmm. Give or take. 2.4 by about... 4. 4? Mm -hmm. And we <laughs> reused as much wood from the old house as we could, couldn't we? So, hmm. so like these, these beams are the, from the rafters in the old house. So the old house is, yeah, the 1880s cottage and the sarking underneath the iron was this beautiful timber. <laughs> yeah so we, we actually spent a long long time trying to calculate what what this measurement would be yeah to make sure that it wasn't you know at least it was a little bit comfortable up here and it's yeah worked out worked out pretty good we lived in a tiny camper van while we demolished the house. And then we thought, well, it's just fine. What more do you need? You know, reach up and there's your toothbrush and there's your make a cup of tea. And it was like small seemed much more it was a human sized, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was a liberation, actually, being in the camper van. I can still remember the first night when we had We'd shifted in, we were sitting there, we were making dinner, and we sat down and we were like, oh shit, yeah, this is fantastic, isn't it? You know, it was just, 
It was warm, it was cozy, it was human sized. You know, like Nessie said, you know, if you wanted a book, it was just there. The clothes <laughs> were just there, the toothbrush was just there. It was, it was, it felt like a freedom. Mm. Yeah. The outdoor pantry. So we love preserves, but we don't have a lot of space for preserves. So all of our preserves go in here. We are the, we are the king and queen of bottle collecting. So we've got, or should I say jar collecting. So we've got tons of these and these. And there's a small insight to what we do in the autumn. That's quince. And tomato. What else we got on here? Looks like black boy peach. Yeah, having done a lot of tramping and mountaineering and those kinds of things and just always love those small little characterful huts and beautiful places. That's mm. that's all we really wanted, really, it was just a small little hut to call home. And so yeah. Just something nice and simple. Mm. So we do, um, we're, we're serious about compost. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have great volumes of compost going at any stage. So it's obviously an active, active heap. <laughs> and we've got a couple of heaps there that are just kind of now just sitting. That one will be ready in April next year. Uh, <coughs> yeah, I guess you like growing stuff. So it's not very exciting at the moment because it's still winter, isn't it? But yeah, we get beans and things and just try to make the most of anything we can grow, grow to eat. So Qigong, it's an ancient practice. Um, it's in the same family as Tai Chi and Kung Fu. You could say it's like the mother of Tai Chi because Tai Chi came out of Qigong and it's always had a focus on um, health and internal development. And, um, the whole aim is to, to build up the chi or the life force, or the energy, if you like, that's all around and build it and strengthen your body so that helps your health as a whole. Um, so I guess I, I came across it. I'd never done anything like that before. I thought it was really weird. Um, but I had a bit of a, a life-changing thing when I was 30 and I had cancer in my small intestine. So I was sort of bottomed out after many years of having a lot of fun in the mountains and mountaineering and climbing and so on. And then um, really needed something to, to help my health. So I, I kind of took up doing qigong and never looked back. <laughs> yeah. So all of the water from out of our kitchen, uh, bathroom, etc., flows down a pipe into a bathtub you can't see, which is just behind that flax bush where there's worms and straw and whatnot. So they eat up all the bits that come through the kitchen sink. And then that water then flows into this tub here which is kind of reeds and scoria and um, yeah to basically soak up you know, kind of the next layer of um, goop if you like and then it all it all flows into here which is like a like a settling tank and then this pipe here is essentially just a just an overflow so when that kind of rises up and overflows effectively it heads around here and waters all of our fruit trees around the outside so we yeah we're just beginning to notice now after having this in place for a couple of years just how good the soil is around the outside here and the yeah the fruit trees all seem to be going pretty well yeah taking a bigger picture view the you know the virus you know covid has has its own energy field it has its own it has its own information, it has its own wisdom to convey to us if we're, if we're open to receiving that. And I think part of that, part of that wisdom is to, you know, go inward, slow down a little bit, you know, reconnect. We're all so, we're all so connected with each other. Yeah, there's a, 
lots of great things we can learn out of that. Mm. Mm. I'm also happy I haven't had it. <laughs> <laughs> Touch wood. <laughs>